Do your parents know that you're gay? I would love to have that conversation with them. At the moment, I think it's just more convenient for me not to have to talk to them about it. First of all, my name is Josh Duncan. Um, I was born in North Adams, Massachusetts. When I was little, um, I would spend a lot of time with my family. I have two biological brothers and one sister, and then my two parents. Um, when I was younger, I think I struggled to try to find my place in, in that dynamic of an already established family. As I matured a little bit, I think I was more successful at connecting with my siblings than I was at connecting with my, my parents to some degree. My, at, the, at the same time in my personal life, my mom was struggling with uh, cancer. It was a long battle for her and, and really impacted my family. In the end, um, for me not having a support group and, not, and having so much turmoil in my household, it left me feeling disconnected and isolated. But later on, um, I think I was in high school at the time I was seeing this lovely girl. Um, <laughs> I was realizing that we didn't have the same mutual connection. And in the end, I realized it wasn't going to go in the direction she wanted it to. But realizing your sexuality is a, a continual process that doesn't ever really stop. Just the manifestation of the moment. Coming out is a very weird process. You know, it doesn't feel natural in the moment. With my parents, I don't think that I I kind of come to the place in in our relationship that when I have someone that's very significant to me, I'm going to introduce them to my parents. And that means that I'll have to also introduce them to an idea that they might not be familiar with in regards to my sexuality. At RIT, I'm a biomedical science major out of the College of Health Sciences and Technology. In the end, I'd like to be a, a cancer research technician. I joined our, the Army back in 2018. I don't know, I think that it pushes me to um, exert myself a lot more physically than I probably would if I wasn't um, incorporated into something larger. I think it holds you to a higher academic standard um, in a way that there are always people around you trying to push you forward. So I, I remember one time, um, I was very overwhelmed at the time with all the events that were going on in my life. And not having the support network around me that I eventually would come to have, I was in my room um, on the second floor of, of my house and just overwhelmed, incredibly sad. I couldn't see out of the hole. You know, they oftentimes say that there's this like hole that you can build yourself and not be able to see past those walls. And I was definitely in that place. Eventually I, I decided to I tried to jump off of my roof. <laughs> I went outside the window and I remember it was a very dramatic situation with dark uh, lightning. After, after it happened, I remember waking up in my dad's arms and he was holding my head and my arm was broken. That was one of the only times that I'd ever seen my dad cry. I think that identity 
isn't necessarily what you see in the mirror. Um, what I see as who I am isn't the gay army dude um, that's in biomedical sciences. I'd rather see myself in the relationships that, I'm, that I continually have, in the friendships that I develop, and the people that I interact with. Along the way, there are the components of my sexuality that come out, components of my career in the army, and my, my civilian career, what I do uh, in learning through CHST um, as a student of biomedical sciences. But being gay for me isn't my identity, it's a factor of who I am.